Hi, I'm Marlon and welcome to this White Noise Studio review and tutorial of the new Gen Audio Sigmod plugin. I'll show you what this plugin can do and how it helps me in mixing and mastering and how it can help you. Stick around, the actual review starts at this time code and if you want to skip the rest of my introduction, in the description below are the links to every part of this video. Before we start, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you know when there's a new video online on this channel. A channel with videos to help you out in recording, mixing and mastering. Sigmod by Nugent Audio is really a Swiss army knife. It is designed to help you in mixing and mastering and can even enhance hardware and plugins you already have. This is a quote from the manual. Nugent Audio Sigmod is a flexible, modular signal modification utility. Sigmod is designed for applying simple processes to adapt and adjust an audio signal, allowing the user to quickly correct, tweak, or convert an audio signal for a wide variety of purposes. Sigmod has many applications, including adding missing master and channel strip features to a DAW, signal monitoring and routing, mid side conversion, and output level protection. So let's call Sigmod a Swiss Army knife for mixing and mastering. It's useful in many situations and really designed to make your workflow easier. To the plugin. This is the bare bones view of Sigmod. Uh, nothing flashy or much eye candy. You can see the left and right input and the left and right output. And you can mute all of these channels. To do anything useful with Sigmod, you can do two things. You select a preset in the preset menu, like this. Or you press this button, which is the settings button and one of the most important buttons of the plugin. This opens the settings page of the plugin where you do all of the routing you want to do. It already starts with this little box where you can select how the plugin will process the incoming signal. You have left right input, mid side input, right left input, so reversed left right channels and reversed side mid. And then there is this plus in the middle. This plus button is where you add the modules you want to use and this is where the real power of the plugin lies. These are the modules you can choose from. Mid side, mute solo, tap, phase, mono, protect, switch, delay, crossover, trim, DC, offset and insert. Best way to explain is just to insert a module and go from there. Let's start with mono. This uh, switches the left and right channel into a mono. The mid-side module can be used to encode uh, the left and right into a mid-side, like this. Next up is mute solo. With this one you can mute the left and right channel or solo the other one. Phase. The phase button will inverse the phase on one of the channels. Uh, okay. Then we have mono. Mono will render the stereo track into mono. Switch will reverse the channels, so left will be right and right will be left, or mid will be side and side will be mid. And then we have delay, which can be set to uh, samples, milliseconds and beats per minute. This one can be useful for fixing phasing issues or some creative effects. Then we have trim. With trim you can set the level of the left and right channel independently. Or you link them together like this. And then we have protect. Protect will act as a safety limiter which will cut out the audio if uh, the audio exceeds a certain level. And you can set it to manual which means if the level gets above the threshold you have to manually reset it. Like this. Uh, you can set it to 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 5 seconds, which means that after this amount of time it will reset itself. Uh, 
and you can select pop-up which will engage a, a system pop-up window so you know where the uh, dropout is coming from. Very handy if you work a lot with Peaky Audio. And then we have DC Offset where you can fix bias in recording. You have to turn on Detect and if it detects any DC Offset it will calculate the correct values to fix it. And the next one is probably my favorite which is the Crossover Module. Uh, this will split the audio into a high pass and low pass band uh, which you can send to the Receive Module. This is the receive module. You have to insert it like this, receive one, and then the low pass will be sent to the receive. So this is where you will use the receive module on a second track. The crossover module itself is perfectly in phase, so good coding here. I use this setup for sidechain compressing. I have this hardware unit which does not have a flexible high pass sidechain filter, so I use SIGMOD to fine tune the crossover point and send the high pass audio to the compressor and leave the low end untouched. Before SIGMOD I did this with two instances of an EQ where I had to tweak and fiddle around with the slopes of low and high pass filters to get a good crossover point, which was always tedious. Um, SIGMOD does this with one knob, that is so much better. Another module which uses the receive plugin is the tap module. Let's connect receive, on. Tap is designed to allow audio to be easily duplicated to a second track for parallel processing or monitor routing. And you can use it for complex routing and monitoring. Uh, if you insert a tap before other plugins, uh, you can uh, listen to the unprocessed signal uh, with uh, tap. Let's insert as a demonstration Little Alter Boy by Sound Toys. And now we can monitor using uh, receive uh, the unaltered audio. Okay. Okay, one to go and that is the insert. With insert you can use any plugin you have inside Sigmod. Here's a plugin list I have. Uh, let's insert Impressor. Here he is. And you click on it, it pops up. And the cool part is it already has a dry and wet control. So this adds parallel compressing if the original plugin doesn't have it. And as you can see in a second, it allows for pretty nifty and nice uh, plugin setups. Okay, let's go back to the crossover. Let's turn it on. Low pass to the receive module. Let's set it to 150 hertz. Let's play. If you go back to the settings window, you can see there are more pluses. This means you can use more modules of SIGMOD. You can add as many as you want in any order you want. So I will add the insert again. And I'll select the Impressor. On. And what I now have is a sidechain filter for the Impressor, which I can blend in as much and as, as little as I want. So, let's tweak around with it.
So with a few modules I've created a high pass side chaining compressor which is parallel compressing the original audio and leaving the low end intact. Of course there are plugins which can already do that like the FabFilter C2 but with Sigmod every plugin has this functionality now. You can add as many modules as you want. And as you can see, Sigmod will resize the more modules it adds. You can create really complex setups with uh, Sigmod, but of course you don't have to. Sigmod is perfectly suited for quick fixes. A few remarks, Sigmod is not automatable. At least not in Cubase. So any tweak you do with this plugin is meant to stay. Since that is what this plugin is largely meant for, that is not a big issue. And if you do want something automated, uh, you can always render a part with Sigmod one way and the rest of the track the other way. Uh, that's one way to work around that. To get the receive module working in Cubase, you have to use an audio channel to put the receive in an insert slot and enable the monitoring on that channel. Otherwise it won't work. It works wonky on a group channel. Um, I've reached out to Nugent Audio about this and they told me they are aware of this issue and are working on it and will update it in a future update. So if you want to export all the audio when you have used a receive module, you have to use a real-time export. Since that will render the audio on a monitored channel correctly. Offline rendering will not render the audio on the receive channel. And if you want to use the receive module, you have to set your DUW to be able to pass through audio through plugins, even when there is no audio. That's a setting you can set. In Cubase, you have to uncheck suspend VS3 plugin processing when no audio signals are received, like this. So the Nugent Audio Sigmod really is a Swiss knife for mixing. It can help out with simpler things like MS decoding and that very nice crossover I like. Uh, but it can also do very complex and creative setups if you want that. If this plugin is something you need, you have to decide for yourself of course. I use it in my mixing and mastering sessions and it has improved my workflow and my working speed. So I'm happy to have it in my plugin arsenal. A link to the Sigmod page is in the description below. They have a trial so you can check out the plugin yourself. Okay, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. See you next time. Bye.